Hello, let's read a story. Oh, say, can you seed? All about flowering plants. Oh, say, can you seed? I'm the cat in the hat, and I think that you need to come take a look at this thing called a seed. From the giant gum tree to this very small weed, every flowering plant started out as a seed. Plants are so useful to me and to you. Can you think of new ways? I will name you a few. The paper for books and the cloth for your pants came from trees and from cotton. That's two kinds of plants. The grains and the fruit and the veggies you eat, why they come from plants too. And here's something neat. In deserts and woods and rainforests thick grow plants that can make you feel well when you're sick. Yes, plants serve us well and fill so many needs and flowering plants all started as seeds. Just what is a seed, you are wondering? Maybe? Well, you might say a seed is a tiny plant baby. Baby. The best way for you to see just what I mean is to take a closer look at a seed called a bean. Like all seeds, a bean comes in three basic parts. Thing one and thing two, please bring us, please bring on the charts. Part one is the first that I think you should know. It's the part that's the baby. It's called embryo. Bean seed. To sprout, it needs food like you and I do, which brings us to seed part numero two. It's called Cotyledon, cotyledon. Say, isn't that fun? This bean has, this bean seed has two, but some others have one. The last comes the third part that you need to know. It's the coat which protects our cute bean embryo. Coat. Outside. To sprout a bean seed, keep it moist but not wet. Keep it covered with dirt and then see what you get. In seven or so days come the parts that I love. A root spreads below and a stem shoots above. Now, in order to show you a grown bean plant, in or now in order to show a grown bean plant to you, we've traveled in time for some months, maybe two. Okay, we've got parts of a bean plant. Shoot system, those things that are above and root system, things that are below. Root system has roots. Shoot system has leaf, fruit, stem, and flowers. Thing two calls the part above 
ground the shoot system. Thing one calls the part underground the root system. To get a good look at the roots underground, it is better to make like a mole I have found. Roots are not pretty. They're twisty and hairy, and some roots even look a little bit scary. Roots anchor a plant and help it stand true. Roots suck up the water and minerals too. And roots keep the soil from just washing away. That's pretty important now, wouldn't you say? Scary root. We've talked about roots and we've learned about them. Now it's time we moved on to the stem. The stem is a pipe through which water shoots, it's absorbed from the soil and passed up through the roots. It shoots through the plant and next, as you'll see, the leaves each turn into food factory. Just like the rhinos protected with the horns, a stem of a rose is protected with thorns. Ouch. Leaves come in all shapes and all sizes, I've found. Some small and some spiky, some big and some round. Your smooth edges, narrow leaves, toothed edges, wavy edges. But the thing that all leaves have in common is this. They make their own food by photosynthesis. I'll say this quite loudly. I don't mean to be rude, but these are lobed edges, broad, fat leaves. Plants are the only living things on earth that make their own food. To this, to do this, plants need water minerals and sun and that's why the daytimes when foods making is done so I shrink up for your information and also for fun hop in my shrink upper and let's see how it's done The leaf takes in CO2 through a stoma or pore. It works like a mouth and that's what it's for. Then the air gets mixed in with the water and sun and that's how the food making factory is run. CO2 means carbon dioxide. Sunlight and giving off oxygen and the stoma. CO2 enters through stoma on underside of leaf. There's water. I see by my clock and that now is the hour to drop in and say a hello to the flower. Plants breathe out a gas that we breathe in. The name of that gas is oxygen. Thing 2 has a chart. He will share it with you. 
that shows what the parts of a flower all do. Parts of a flower. We have a pistil, which is the stigma and style and ovary. And an ovule and a pollen tube. And a stamen, that's an antler and a filament and a petal. In the pistil are ovules, their unfertilized seed. The stamen holds pollen, which an ovule needs. An unfertilized ovule will not even grow, and the pollen's the stuff that will fix that, you know. A flower's own pollen, or another's okay, that's where the bees play a role, by the way. To bake honey, bees need to get nectar from the flowers. Then fly and they gather the sweet stuff for hours. The pollen sticks onto their bodies and legs. It falls off and sometimes it reaches the eggs. An ovule that's fertilized becomes a seed. Around it grows fruit, upon which we feed. When we say the word fruit, do you know what that means? It means olives, nuts, grains, plantains, and tangerines. And apples and oranges and pineapples too, all kinds of plant foods that are healthy for you. Some fruits are juicy and messy to munch on. Dry ones like nuts are nice just to crunch on. Not all plants with seeds give us edible fruit. Some plants have seeds that look weird or look cute. But burr seeds are hitchhikers that ride on your clothes. And dandelion seeds Sometimes fly up your nose. Those are burrs. And that's a dandelion. Oh. Some seeds come in pods that explode with a sneeze. Other seeds may have wings and can fly on a breeze. <clears throat> but whether they stick or they blow or they fly, seeds bring us life. And now you know why. I see the setting sun and here comes the moon. The sun and the moon. Your mother is calling. Your dinner is soon. I hope you have learned from my little seed talk. And now I will climb up. This giant beanstalk. The end.